So we're here at Moffat Airfield, the NASA Ames Research Center. And behind me is the Ocean Force One, our latest research platform, which we'll be using in the next few days to cross the Great Pacific Garbage Patch a few times to actually measure how much of the largest debris in the ocean is out there. Stuff like ghost nets and other very large and, and dangerous uh, ocean garbage. And this aircraft is a, is a C-130 Hercules. Uh, it used to be military, it actually went to Vietnam um, half, a, half a century ago. Now, now we've, we've fitted this with sensors and experienced observers to, to find out this, this last missing link when it comes to the plastic pollution problem, which is how much of this extremely large plastic is out there. So uh, let's have a look how it looks like inside. So here we are in the cockpit. And here we have Mark, he's our navigator. And uh, he actually used to be the pilot together with Steve Fawcett when they crossed the, Pacific, uh, the Atlantic Ocean with a historic biplane in what year was that? The, we were reenacting the very first flight, first non-stop crossing of the uh, Atlantic Ocean, which occurred in 1919 by Al Cotton Brown. So we flew a replica airplane right. and re reenacted the same flight. Sure. And um, let's see, what other crew do we have over here? Uh, this is Kurt, he's our flight engineer. Yeah. Yep. Stephanie Meyer, yeah. our co-pilot. Yeah. And basically from here, the, for the aircraft is being operated. And at the same time, we'll also be using the cockpit to help uh, look, look out for, for debris visually. Let's go sit back to the aircraft. And what you see here are two um, additional uh, fuel tanks. Uh, each one of them lasts about one to two hours, depending on the weather we are on transit or uh, surveying. And um, these things help us get the range we need because the Great Pacific Garbage Patch is really as far as you can get from land. It's uh, a thousand miles offshore, middle of nowhere, uh, so to get really this, this good distance and plenty of survey time, we need this extra fuel. So now here in the aft side of the, the aircraft, we have the, the, the survey crew. So these are the people who, um, who will be visually um, counting and describing the debris uh, we come across. And um, um, right there we, have, we see Julia, who's the, the chief scientist of the mission. And so we have people who are uh, data recorders. So like Anna right here, uh, she'll be taking notes just to make sure that we record everything. And then we have the observers who actually look out of this, this open paratrooper door. So normally people, military people would jump out of these, these doors. Actually we're, we're flying with all these doors open uh, to be able to uh, look out for debris. Uh, it's a double blind survey. So we have one person here and on the other side of this, uh, this um, shield we have someone else and and this the screen helps them to not see their each other's responses um, but it's actually um, a scientifically sound survey so there are really two sides of this expedition on one side we use the conventional strategy of using people human observers to uh, to count the plastic and then we supplement that by a new experimental uh, method which is using these high-tech sensors to actually um, uh, measure the debris potentially even more accurately. So to have a look at that, we should come back to the, the stern of the aircraft. What you see here is a Teledyne Nova system, and this is really the, the most advanced LiDAR system that's on the market today. And um, a, a LiDAR is a system that sends out these very high frequency uh, laser pulses and the reflection then gets uh, hit, uh, then hits a sensor here. And um, with that, we should actually be able to create a 3D map of what's happening between the surface and a depth of 80 meters. So in case there is like a, something like a ghost net, it can go down actually a few meters, the, the draft of such a thing. So we should actually be able to see the 3D shape of these objects. And that helps us to convert the count of objects to volume and thereby also to mass of these objects, which is of course very important if you want to know how many tons of plastic is floating in the ocean.
And we're supplementing that with, with two other sensors. We also have an RGB camera here, as well as this shortwave infrared sensor right here. And because plastic has a certain chemical profile, uh, it, emits, um, this, it emits light at a, at a different frequency than the, the water does. And that's something we can register with infrared, with this infrared sensor. And that way we hope really on these images the plastic sort of lights up so that we can easily distinguish what's plastic and what is some, some other material. So there you have it, the aerial expedition taking off here from Moffat Airfield in a few days from now. And really this should be the final reconnaissance mission before we actually start cleaning up the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. We'll keep you posted what's happening over the next few days.